Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. Today I will discuss with you a very important biochemical technique which is important for measuring protein-protein interactions as well as characterizing proteins on their own by the help of their antibodies. And those are co-immunoprecipitation and immunoprecipitation. So let's take a look at what these techniques are all about. Now we know that protein-protein interactions are crucial to functioning of the cell, whether we are talking about membrane proteins or signaling pathway proteins or enzyme complexes, as in this case you can see fatty acid synthase complex, all these different colored blobs that you are looking at, they are different protein polypeptides coming together to form this fatty acid synthase complex, very important in lipid biosynthesis. Similarly, the complexes of oxidative phosphorylation or the normal molecular biology macromolecular complexes, for example, spliceosome, ribosome, DNA replication machinery, replisome, even RNA polymerase and its associated transcriptional machinery, they are all multi-molecular, multi-protein subunit, basically the robots and giants of the cell, which help in carrying out various functions of the cell. But how to carry out systematic analysis of which proteins interact with each other. If we want to develop an understanding of biology at the level of understanding the interactions between different proteins, we need to understand which proteins interact with each other. Now there are a couple of assays as recently we discussed yeast 2 hybrid assay also is a very good technique to determine whether two proteins interact with each other. But the gold standard for measuring protein protein interactions remains the immunoprecipitation and co-immunoprecipitation. So let's take a look. Okay, let's talk about immunoprecipitation first. What is immunoprecipitation? It is a very rapid technique and it can be used in almost any lab because there are no filters, no columns, no centrifugation steps involved in this technique. What we do is we take a cell lysate or protein mixture, which is we have prepared from either bacterial cell culture or from a tissue extract. And also we have a coupled antibody. Now this antibody is coupled to an agarose or a sepharose bead. Sepharose is basically a derivative of agarose, so you can consider them almost equivalent. And when we incubate these two together, you can imagine what will happen. Usually these beads are sometimes magnetized also by some manufacturers to really ease the, really make it easy for the technique to be employed. So we spin them, we wash them. So what will happen is non-specific interactions will be washed off and the antibody antigen or antibody protein interactions will be preserved. And then we can analyze this eluted protein by a Western blot or mass spec or by other analysis. Now, why would you want to do that? There are a couple of reasons. Immunoprecipitation is a very important technique if you want to know the molecular weight of a protein, the isoelectric point of a protein, so basic characterization of the protein. It is also helpful if you want to know in a particular tissue whether a protein is expressed or not. So you can use that antibody to probe that tissue using its tissue extract. And the third is if you want to know, for example, the glycation status or the addition of carbohydrates to the protein, what you can do is you can radio label monosaccharides or the particular oligosaccharides which you think are present in that protein. And if your particular protein is actually glycosylated, what will happen is these radio labeled carbohydrate molecules will be incorporated into your protein and they will give the radioactive signal when the cell grows and makes that particular protein. So immunoprecipitation is a very good technique for basic protein characterization. Now we move on to co-immunoprecipitation. Now in co-immunoprecipitation, we want to look at protein complexes. So here the idea is still the same, starting material is still cell lysate or protein mixture, whatever extract we have from the tissue or bacterial cell culture or whatever cell culture we have. We have the coupled antibody again, but in this case we are not interested in just that antigen or the protein. We are interested in the protein which interacts with that protein in a complex hopefully and we want to pull it down. So we incubate again with the antibody coupled resin. So this is the same agarose bead coupled with the antibody. Usually the antibody binds using its FC region here. 
that is the crystallized fragment or FC region to the bead and hopefully what will happen is non-specific interactions will be washed out and you will be left with your antibody protein and some other protein and then you can use mass spec or some other technique for example western blot to detect whether your for example suspected protein is there or not so this is the basic idea behind co-immunoprecipitation okay so you can analyze this protein complex very easily so this has led to a lot of discoveries about involvement of different proteins in the same pathway, identification of various protein partners working in the same pathway or biological process. It has been immensely useful because of its versatility and its ease of use. Now here is a very good example of IP and co-IP side by side. So you can see and compare how these techniques actually work. In the IP, remember we are looking at only one protein at a time. Here we have IP with mouse anti-CDC2 antibodies. So here we have our protein ladder. This is a western blot. This is our input. So this is our actually crude extract that we are looking at and we are only interested in anti-CDC2 antibodies. So they will recognize that protein if it is present and yes, it is present at the right molecular weight. And in our IP, in immunoprecipitation, we can also use the antibody to pull it down. So it is exactly at the same molecular weight. In the negative control, there is no such band. So we can be confident about this protein being present and being characterized by immunoprecipitation using IP. In co-IP, we are testing the interaction of CDC2 with another protein, which is called cyclin B1. So these are both involved in cell cycle regulation. So we have mouse anti-CDC2 antibodies just like in the IP. And here we have again protein ladder. This is a western blot. Okay, input. And here we can see the signal for anticyclin B B1. So it is present in the input and it is also present in the IP. Okay, so in the co-IP, it is being precipitated along with CDC2. Now remember, we did not use anti-cyclin B1 antibody to pull it down. We used only anti-CDC2. So this protein is coming along with it. Okay, so it is present as part of a complex and it is absent in this negative control band. So very specific experiment. So you can see how useful it can be to characterize protein-protein interactions. Here is an example of a medically important or clinically relevant research. Sometimes people think, okay, you know, what is the medical relevance of it? So here is one of the pioneering studies using co-immunoprecipitation where they found the association between adenovirus E1A protein, which is an oncogene and a tumor suppressor gene, which is retinoblastoma. Now retinoblastoma and its mutations are pretty famous because they give rise to blindness or partial blindness in many cases around the world. So here using different antibodies, they characterize the interaction between adenovirus E1A protein and retinoblastoma. So here, just to give you an idea about the experiment, they are using two cell lines, 293 cells and HeLa cells. Okay. And they are using three different antibodies. PAB419, this is their negative control. This is specific for SV40 large antigen okay C36 this is the antibody against RB protein and M73 is against the E1A protein or the family of E1A proteins because there are many okay HeLa cells don't express E1A proteins there is none of it right here so this lane is totally empty the negative controls are empty in both the experiments so that's a good sign and the c36 you can see the rb is pulling this band p105 this is actually the rb because earlier it's it was called p105 because it had a weight of 105 kilo dalton and we did not know what is the nature of that protein and in this paper they identified that p105 is actually retinoblastoma gene product of retinoblastoma protein and you can also see that the c36 is also pulling down some e1a proteins so it is pulling up you know different uh, proteins which interact with it 
Similarly, M73, which is specific for E1A protein, it is pulling up, pulling down several other proteins which interact with it along with P105. There are some other proteins also which are presumably interaction partners and of course E1A proteins. So you can see that this network of proteins is being analyzed. You can cut these bands and send them for mass spec and look at what these proteins are and hopefully that will lead to more experiments and further elucidation of this biological process. Just as a very good confirmation, they also looked for the specific interaction of the C36 antibody, which is specific for RB, and they looked at whether it is present in the cell lines which have retinoblastoma gene mutated. So a retinoblastoma gene product is not present in these cell lines. These are actually tumor cell lines where retinoblastoma is mutated and there is no active RB protein. And uh, just to confirm it, they actually found that there was no band here. Right? Uh, 416 was already the negative control, so it is no surprise that those lanes are empty. But here we are not uh, significantly pulling any signal for RB protein. So this gives us a very good confirmatory idea about absence of RB in these cell lines, which we already know to be true. Okay, so. Immunoprecipitation and co-immunoprecipitation, both very useful techniques, very easy to use, very easy to apply in most research labs, right? There are no filters or columns or centrifugation steps to complicate our analysis, very easy to employ and give rapid kinetics and rapid results. Okay, so very useful. I hope you like this information about immunoprecipitation and co-immunoprecipitation. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel for more educational videos like this. Till the next time we meet, take care and bye-bye.